Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome, welcome to Brilliant Babs Tuesday edition. Why is Rob wondering if we are live? Yes, brother Rob. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> this is live, 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 live. Okay, Brilliant Babs in the fray. Sister Sheila, good to see you. Welcome, 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 everybody. All right, Susie Q is in the house. Greetings. Greetings. Dig in and pitch in. Okay, I like that name. <laughs> I like that name. I like that name. All right, guys, we're going to get started, okay? I appreciate you guys that you're here. So, um, you know, what has transpired? Has been, what I say, <laughs> Brother Rob? <laughs> oh, I made a live. <laughs> you're live. You're live. Do not worry. All right, guys, thank you for being here. My name is Violet, and welcome to Burying Your Babs. We begin. Candice Owens, Christ is the King, P. Diddy, Ben Shapiro, Dewar, Andrew Kevin, and Rabbi Shumuri. So lots, lots to get to, but we're going to get started. So as you know, I've done already a couple of videos, but this is, uh, you know, there's stuff that's, uh, that's coming out. So I'm glad that you're here because we're just going to dig in into it. So there has been a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Shmuley. Okay. I mean, I hope that's how he pronounces his name. So I'll share some of the clips. Uh, he got into it with Candice. Okay. And as you know, uh, right now, <laughs> there's a lot of drama that's going on. But this is what Candice shared prior to her um, her departure from Daily Wire, okay? So, I mean, she was under contract. Nobody's not saying anything. But we have Ben Shapiro. Uh, ben Shapiro is talking. He said something, so we have a video for you guys. That way you can hear what Ben Shapiro is saying or not saying, okay? So, without further ado, uh, this is... Uh, Candice Owens, just, you know, uh, sharing the, the battle that she's had. Okay, so here we go, guys. Welcome to the chat. Rabbi Shmuley, woo, things are really heating up. Let me just bring you guys forward on everything that has transpired. So way back when everything was going down with Kanye West two years ago, obviously two years ago, very long time ago, uh, relative to just the political moment, um, I declined to publicly insult my friend. Some people were offended by that. I understand the offense. I also hope that some people respect that when you have a real relationship somewhere, you don't turn those individuals into a headline uh, because there's peer pressure to do so. Regardless, Kanye West notoriously tweets, that he wants to go DEFCON 3 on Jews after he goes to bed. And the press went crazy. People were very fearful. I obviously had an inside track. I knew that he was being threatened behind the scenes by somebody that was close to him, a Jewish person by the name of Harley Pasternak. And that was a part of the reason that he was so upset. So I did a show the day after Kanye tweeted that, before he did any interviews, the day after just the tweet existed, and I asked people essentially to just give him some time. I said, I don't think he is going to blow up Israel. Let's all just calm down and give him some time to explain what's going on. And since that very moment, a man by the name of Rabbi Shmuley and his hag daughter have been harassing me. They have made videos after videos, smearing me, libeling me as an anti-Semite, saying that I defend Hitler, that I defend, just an absolute nonsense. I want to be clear, it's been going on for two years. They watch every minute of the show, take me out of context, and essentially are trying to create hatred between me and the Jewish community, which is just never going to happen. It's, I'm telling you, it's just never going to happen. I have too many Jewish friends. I love Jewish people. They're part of my story so much in the things that they have done for me since I was a child. You know, I've, I've shared that with you. We don't need to recap that. It's just, it's never going to work, but he won't stop. The threats don't stop. And I showed you guys, uh, basically, just a small snippet, really just a minute of their harassment over the last two years. And some of you guys were very stunned and shocked. And I'm finally defending myself and I feel good about it. Like, I'm not pregnant anymore. I'm like, let's go. Like, let's go, Rabbi Shmuley. So he sees me defending myself and he's now doubling down. He's getting crazier crazier in his threats against me. This is unbelievable. The Jerusalem Post, which by the way, I actually really like that publication because they do a very good job of just telling you what happened. There's no twist on it. They're telling you, basically, here's the headline, Candace Owens and Rabbi Shmuley squabble over anti-Semitism, blackmail, and Kanye West. And they do a very good job of this article of just uh, giving you the play-by-play -play of what has happened since the very beginning. But burning into this article, I could not believe this. Like they reached out to him for a comment and he actually said this. Quote, there can be no question that Candace's serious defamation against me and the Jewish community must be met with a comprehensive lawsuit that will bankrupt her. Bankrupt her. He wants to bankrupt me for defending myself against him and his hag daughter, right? 
Why do I call him an unholy rabbi? Because who does that? It's one thing to say, like, I want to sue somebody. It's another thing to say that I want to bankrupt that person. He constantly makes these sorts of financial threats. And why should we talk about that? Because if I or somebody else said, oh, you know, Jewish people always try to come after people in the means of money, it would be referred to as an anti-Semitic trope. Well, what is he doing right here if not engaging or creating that very trope by saying that he wants to bankrupt somebody? Why? Oh, because, like, she's defending herself. Like, she doesn't have a right to defend herself. I can go after her and smear her and libel her for two years straight, and she better not say anything. Listen, uh, Rabbi, I don't know what thug life you think you're a part of, but I want to be very clear that I am— Definitely an uppity black person. I say that, obviously, as a nod to uh, Clarence Thomas when he was testifying and saying that if there's a black person who ordains to think for themselves, these people are deemed uppity. And I want you to know, Rabbi Chumley, that I am indeed an uppity black, okay? I am not taking kindly to your threats. So let's just get to the bottom of them. What's next? What's next? I don't, I don't fear you, okay? So you want to bankrupt me for defending myself? Is that what you said, by the way? Is, are those one of the reasons that Michael Jackson put you on a list? of individuals that he felt were threatening his life? Were you threatening to bankrupt him? Why don't you answer the questions? I don't fear you whatsoever. So what's next? You've already libeled. You've already smeared. Now you're threatening to bankrupt. What are you going to do next? You're going to kill me? Are you going to kill me because I refuse to kowtow to you because I'm not fearful of you? And I think it's weird that you and your daughter are promoting and selling sex toys. That's why I deem you an unholy rabbi because the industrialization of sex is harmful to our society everywhere. I don't care if you call it kosher sex. You're selling butt plugs on the internet. You gross me out. You disgust me. I am a better person than you, and I do not fear you. As I said, you don't have the ability or the strength to fracture the relationships between me and the Jewish community. You just, you don't have that power. So what's next? Show us. I want everyone to see what you do to me. I want you to have the largest platform in the world so people can see what people like you do and what you think you have the power to do. Hey guys, if you like this video, you will definitely like the full episode even better. You can find it. All right, so that is uh, that is Candice Owens when she was still working for the Daily Wire while these things were brewing. So Rabbi Shmuley, uh, he wrote a book 25 years ago talking about, you know, just redeeming sex in marriage. And then the daughter now promotes it, apparently. The daughter has a shop, an adult shop. But be that as it may, even within the Jewish community, this rabbi is, <laughs> people are also, they have a distance, okay? He likes to put himself, um, you know, make videos, things of that nature. But notice what kind of said, right? Uh, according to her, people wanted her to uh, talk about the headlines about Kanye West, right? And she refused to do that because her and Kanye West are friends. But my question to how many times has Candice talked about Kim Kardashian on her on her program, on her show, even when Kanye was still married to Kim Kardashian? So whatever you think about uh, Kim Kardashian, if Kanye West is your friend, why are you talking about his wife? I don't think my friends will be talking about my husband, let alone publicly on a platform. So now, like, you know, Kanye West did the issue... Um, the, the death con, how he got in trouble with the Jewish community. Now, just like, okay, people are expecting you to comment on something. All of a sudden, I don't want to comment anything. Why? Because Kanye West is my friend. Oh, yeah, they're definitely friends. But to me, I'm like, okay, if he's your friend, why are you so comfortable to be talking about his wife like that? So i just like, okay, you know, these are the, the I don't know how they handle relationship, the friendships in Hollywood. Okay. But uh, what are you guys saying? Now we're going to play a, a video about La- Rabbi Shmuri. <laughs> I think that, I don't know what his name is, man. It's actually a very uh, <laughs> interesting name. Interesting name. All right, guys. You know, I have the chats, so we will be good. Because I've been slacking on the chats, okay? So I don't want it to be uh, to be the issue. I remember <laughs> Kanye... Yes, I do think he definitely does have uh, an issue because now this guy is telling us that he's God like, and he has issues with Jesus. So, like, no, that's not how uh, Christians behave. So, no, we do not want to die. Okay. Y- yes, Candice went after Rabbi Shmuri, you know, <laughs> and went because uh, Rabbi Shmuri. <laughs> I'm with you, Shayla. Okay, I'm with you, Shayla. Because I'm like, no, she, Candace knows how to play the game. That one thing, you got to give it to her. So, uh, you know, let's go to uh, Rabbi Shmuri. <laughs> I'm sure you guys want to see Rabbi Shmuri. <laughs> so now, this is Rabbi Shmuri. Mind you, this is not the only rabbi that Candace has found herself in situation, okay? 
She also got into it with Rabbi Barkley. I already did a video about that. So now uh, uh, introducing Rabbi Shmuli. <laughs> okay. With Candace Owens, where she described him as being unholy for running a kosher sex shop with his daughter. Candace Owens, I don't take anything she says seriously. She'll say anything for attention. She knows nothing about Judaism and she knows nothing about sex, clearly. In Judaism, sex is the holiest act that two people can engage in, especially within the confines of marriage. And that's what we set out to do with kosher sex. This was a book that my dad wrote 25 years ago, and he wrote it to enhance marriage and to make it exciting and to use Jewish wisdom to keep couples connected. And I took those ideas 25 years later because sex had only taken more of a hit. Like my dad said, endless porn addiction, infidelity. People have lost the ability to connect. Metal Max One wrote, completely unfair to allow both Shmuley and his daughter to come on and attack Candace Owens without having Candace on to defend herself. Shmuley and his daughter have been attacking Owens for over a year. And the moment she replies, she's called an anti-Semite. It is crazy and poor form for the show. Well, to be fair, we have repeatedly asked Candace on Uncensored. Uh, she's indicated she may come on soon. I hope that's the case and she can say what the hell she likes in response. But I think it's also fair to say she's been doing that anyway when it comes to Rabbi Shmuley. As for a kosher sex shop, why not? Why shouldn't Jewish people be allowed to have sex? If they want to use stuff from a sex shop, why should they be precluded from doing so? Why should we feel that's anything bad? Sex is wholesome, people. You should try it more. Okay, so... <laughs> so that was uh, Laba Shmuri's daughter responding. And I do think... Whatever they're doing, right? Like, remember, Jewish people, they do have... They also have their own traditions. So... You looking at their tradition might be like, ah, I don't think this is up and up. But according to them, within their tradition, within their culture, it's fine. So, you know, there's certain things that we do, like in my culture. Some of you guys, you think like, oh, wow, you know, like, why would you do that? You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, how um, I think like the Chinese, the bow, you know what I'm saying? That's what they have like in their culture. We don't have it over here, okay? In my culture, you kneel. Okay, over here, you'd be like, why, why are you kneeling? Okay, remember when the Duchess of Saxes was having problems, why should you be catching for, you know, for your grandmother, like the queen, things of that nature. So there are certain things that I do, uh, that are in play here, that have to do with cultural, uh, in, with cultural things, so be that is me. But Rabbi Shmuri is also a very controversial figure. Apparently, he also threatened uh, Michael Jackson, according to Candice Owens. So I'm like, okay, so if somebody has the audacity to threaten uh, Michael Jackson, <laughs> I'm like, oh boy. Yeah. So uh, what else has taken place? So as you already know, that Candice Owen has found herself in this situation. Now the most thing that's trending right now is Crisis King. But we, we, before we go there, Ben Shapiro was asked the question as to why was Candice fired? So Ben Shapiro has responded, okay? So here is the conversation that Ben Shapiro, uh, this is how he responded. So you make that what you will, okay? There's a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the center of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. C can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not, you can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are, and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them. However, I mean, suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts, I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Jeremy Boring and Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. I've never called for Candace or anyone else for that matter to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to, uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. I mean, it's, I'm just not going to labor this, but one more point I would make is it's been reported extensively that the reason for her departure was because uh, her comments have been perceived by people at The Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. Again, I'm, I'm not going to comment on this, Pierce. Okay. 
Rabbi Shmuley, would you comment on him? Because Jeremy has actually commented on Rabbi Shmuley. So I've avoided commenting publicly on Rabbi Shmuley because as far as I can tell, the man is an attention whore of the highest order. Is that the general position of the company on Mr. Shmuley? I mean, that, that's my personal position for sure. I mean, I, I think that, you know, Rabbi Shmuley happens to be a person with whom I agree on some matters related to, say, Middle East policy. And uh, I, I also believe that his devotion to camera and notoriety have made him do some untethered things in, in recent days. I mean, there's a clip, I'm just going to play it, and you can comment or otherwise, but it was extraordinary to me. We've had him on this show a few times, but I found this really quite extraordinary. Let's take a look. Worm is a day of celebration. We feel bad for Candace Owens that she lost her job. So I figure, with her image of what Jews are supposed to look like, why not val at least validate her? I am dressed up as a Candace Owens Jew. Now, this is not a Christian child, this is a Jewish child. But if it would be, I got my Christian blood. Mmm, spicy, delicious. I got my Jewish nose. I have filth, because Jews are all filth. And more than anything else, what does AD have? Money! I mean, what is your reaction to that to that clip? I mean, the phrase in Hebrew is that's what we would call a chilo Hashem, right? It's a, de it's a desecration of God's name. And that sort of behavior is, is disgusting in any context. Uh, and uh, frankly, I don't know an Orthodox Jew who feels differently about that, not one. Do you think he should be given airtime anymore, Rabbi Shmuley? I mean, I'm not going to make decisions about who should air him and, and who should not. Uh, what I will say is that the, that, that sort of behavior is untethered from reality and, and makes a mockery of much of the uh, the mission for, for people like me, which includes fighting anti-Semitism. Yeah, but I get a lot of people, actually, after his most recent appearance here, just saying, this guy does not speak for most Jewish people like me. And they, they write in their droves and they say, please stop having someone on. Well, I mean, that, I mean what he's like doing a... there certainly doesn't speak for literally any Jew that, I can, that I've heard of right. or know. I mean, I can't speak to his positions on Israel again. You know, my positions on Israel speak for my positions on Israel, but that's a different story from dressing up in a disturmer costume uh, to, to mock anti-Semitism. I think that that's quite you know, counterproductive and and especially given the, the online discourse, pretty, pretty negative in, in pretty much every way I can think of. Yeah. Russia and what happened there with the terror attack by ISIS-K. Um, people have made... Some All right, so we're just going to leave it there because that was uh, Ben Shapiro speaking to um, Piers Morgan. And as you can see, he's not going to disclose. But one thing that he also shared, he did share that he, uh, Jeremy, is the one who is responsible um, with management and another guy. Ben Shapiro, he's a co-owner for sure, but he does not make a decision on hiring or firing. But he did say, like, which company is going to have... Um, he, he did say, like, you know, they're a platform, not... Um, I forgot exactly the phrase that he used, right? But what he said is just like, okay... Which platform is going to entertain Candice's behavior? You see what I'm saying? Just because people want to hide behind whatever free speech, things of that nature. But he did not want to disclose anything because I guess, you know what I mean, this might affect um, contract issues. So he decided not to, uh, to disclose any more information. So that, that's what happened. That was Rabbi Shmuri now... Uh, clapping back, I guess, making funny at Candice Owen, because Candice Owen had, you know, they've been going at each other for quite some time, okay? They say, like, you know, these people drink blood, things of that nature. So that's how this and other things that has landed Candice to be accused of uh, anti-Semitism. And it did not even help matters ways because you have uh, Nick Frentis. Candice doesn't even know who Nick Frentis is. But Nick Frentis is clapping for Candice, is celebrating this issue. And Nick Frentis and Ben Shapiro, they are arch enemies. So you can see, just like, okay, your enemy's friend <laughs> is your friend. That's what's uh, happening in a public square, which is very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. So, but, so what are you guys saying? <laughs> oh, okay, Rabbi Shmuri. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have made Rabbi Shmuri. <laughs> oh, Jenna, you think he's hiding something? Yes, I think Ben is hiding something. He's definitely hiding something for sure. He's hiding something for sure. Yes, so... I, yeah. Man, who knows what is going on, okay? <laughs> who knows what is going on? Okay, so uh, let's listen a bit because I think he might have said something here. I stopped it too soon. If not, we'll carry on with something else. Some parallels. They said, look, there's a massive terror attack on the heart of Russia in Moscow. Uh, 130 people brutally murdered. Putin uh, and the Kremlin know where these terrorists came from and of a specific area. Would it be logical, given the way that Israel responded to uh, the Hamas attack on October the 7th, for Putin to go and 
do the same thing that Israel's done in Gaza to the area where these terrorists came from. I mean, so first of all, Putin has done. Yeah, so I guess, you know, well, we, we don't need that information because now they're talking about Russia and everything else. But that's the gist of it when uh, Ben Shapiro was approached to uh, to explain something about Candice Owens. So obviously nobody wants to say something. I did attend yesterday. There was um, a, a space. Jeremy Boring was asked a whole bunch of questions and he did answer the question, but he also did refuse to speak any anything regarding Candice Owen, but he was able to answer questions and Nick Fuentes was on there and they're trying to make, oh, okay, we want Nick Fuentes to debate uh, Ben Shapiro. So I, I don't think Ben Shapiro is going to do it. The guy, yeah, following Ben Shapiro, his family, things of that nature. So that wasn't, uh, it wasn't good. So what has taken place now, okay? Uh, there has been things that have been going on uh, on Twitter. Crisis King has been trending. And Candice has found herself once again at the center of all of these things. And uh, what's this guy's name? Andrew Curvin. He also works for Daily Wire. He came out and this is what he had to say. Okay. And then we're going to go into uh, the tweets that Candice put out. That way you guys, you should be able to follow to see exactly the, the build up. How... How we got here. Of my race. It's a, it's a great race. It's done many, many great things, including write the Bible. And, you know, I am a, but that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King, anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King, and one day every knee will bow and recognize it, because he's not just my King, he's King of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews. You are quoting scripture. I took off my paper crown and bowed my knee before his crown of golden light. I became a true man and a free man, and the joy in my heart has only grown. You know, when I did this, by the way, the priest who baptized me said, you know, Christians won't accept you. They'll, you'll still be a Jew. And I said, well, I am. That's my race. I'm a Jew. I'm proud of my race. It's a, it's a great race. It's done many, many great things, including write the Bible. And, you know, I am a Jew. But that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms except this Christ the King, anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King, and one day every knee will bow and recognize it, because he's not just my King, he's King of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews, you are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your purposes, and that to me is specifically wicked. You know, when you spit that phrase at Ben Shapiro, my friend Ben Shapiro, and, and you know, I, un I understand this. All, every, all of you who love Ben, and I love Ben, and Jordan Peterson, you all want to see them find Jesus because you know what joy and, and freedom that gives you, and, and you certainly feel that it alters your relationship with God. But when I think about this, to be honest with you, uh, you know, and I know some people will disagree with this, but I, life is not a game show where you guess the name of God and, and you get to go to heaven, honk, you know, yes, the name is Jesus. I look at Ben's life and I think if, if Ben were to embrace Jesus Christ, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. I just have this feeling that God has put this guy where he wants him to do what he wants him to do. And as you know, I feel that, you know, the Jews were not abandoned by God. I, I feel the same way about Jordan. Jordan struggles with this stuff, and I, I feel like I have an inkling of why he has to struggle with it, but his struggle is inspiring to other people. And I think God wants his boys where he's got them, and I, th there's no thought in my mind that he is going to send these guys into battle and then turn his back on them when they come marching home. It's not a game show. You know, Christ is love. Christ is truth. Christ is the logos of the moral. All right, before I continue, uh, this is Andrew Craven. He professes to be a Christian. But what he said over there, that does not match up the scripture, okay? In Acts 17, God commands every man everywhere to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. So why would God, the way he's putting it, it's almost like God is the one who is holding Ben Shapiro not to bow the knee or um, what's the other guy's name? Jordan Peterson, okay? And according to him, if Ben Shapiro bows the knee to Christ today, comes to the, it will cause the devastation to his family and everything. That's exactly why Jesus has come for, to, to put you against your family. If you're not worthy him 
uh, then you're not worthy uh, following Jesus. You should be willing to lose it all for the sake of Christ. It costs you something to follow Christ. So if Andrew Kevin is a Christian and I bet you he's over there failing to witness to Ben, failing to witness to, uh, to witness to um, Jordan Peterson because he just wants them to be where they are. That's, that's not should be the, it should not be it. Can you imagine Jordan Peterson as smart as he is if this guy would bow the knee? The way, the sharp instrument that he can be in the hands of God. Even Ben Shapiro himself, right? The influence that he has if this guy bows the knee. It will be a very good thing. So every time you have an opportunity, we want these people to come to know Christ. That's the goal. That's the idea. Regardless of amount of worth, everything else that, that they accumulate. So I don't think what he said there was correct, biblically speaking. Now, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk more as it relates to the phrase, Christ is the king, and how everything else has transpired, okay? But I just wanted to uh, bring that clarification there. Like, ah, oh, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, as Christians, we don't need to compromise to say like, oh, you know, just leave Ben the way he is. Just leave uh, Jordan Peterson the way he is. What if they don't make it tomorrow? What if they die today before they, they confess Jesus as their Lord and their Savior? You see what I'm saying? And now God uses sinful people all over the world, right? He uses anybody. But we cannot be saying like, oh, we don't want to witness to this particular person because God is using them in this situation. This is like, no, we, we are to, to proclaim Christ in, uh, in every way that we are able to. So let's listen to some more to what he shared. Okay, here we go order, you follow love, you follow truth, you follow the moral order, you will find yourself ultimately at Jesus Christ's door. I don't worry about Ben and Jordan Peterson one little bit. And so when you spit Christ the King at them to insist that they have been rejected by the one who sent them to do the work that they're doing, nah, no, 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 no. <laughs> now, that, that just doesn't sit with me in the least. Okay, so that was uh, Andrew he works also for Daily Wire. I guess, you know, he came out to defend Ben and everything. That's fine. They can do that because they know they in awakens the things that were happening at the Daily Wire. Who knows? But all these things are playing in public. Okay? There's been uh, quite a backlash. So now we're going to go into how all these things uh, transpired. Okay? Welcome. Okay? This has become... A uh, yes, uh, yes, Miss Beatty. It's a destruction, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a destruction. But it's here. <laughs> okay, uh, he sounds like he's not saved. <sighs> well, he also, I think, he, his son is a part of the rainbow. He seemed to be embracing the rainbow crowd. So there are certain things, just like, Aish, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? We just can't be opening the tent wide. If you show certain things. We're just going to call it for what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, people, pray for these people, man, because they do have a huge influence uh, in, you know, in the public square. So, now, what has uh, taken place, okay? Candice Owens, okay? Candice Owens, uh, like I said, that she was, uh, she was trending, and Jesus is King was also trending, okay? And there has been a, an issue where everybody's saying, okay, why can't we say that Jesus is king? Is that anti-Semitic? Is that a controversial statement? The answer is to say that Jesus is king, Christ is king. Is that anti-Semitic? No, it is not. Are people using this in a way that's not uh, God-honoring? The answer is yes. Not everybody is using it in that way. But in this instance, since we're talking about Candice, we're just going to center it on Candice. If you ask me, the answer is yes. Candice is not using this term the way that you might use it, okay? She's using this term as a jab. Just because the phrase is correct, that Christ is king, and then, okay, it's correct. Like, you know, you can use good things for bad things, right? And we cannot just give a pass. Why? Because God is a God of order. And God, you know, the end doesn't justify the means. Okay? So if the means that you're using to proclaim Christ as king are questionable, God is not pleased upon that. Once again, because Candice, 
uh, Candice, she's a cultural Christian. She's a conservative. Candice is not a believer. As a result, because people are using this terminology, people have just jumped in and be like, oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? She, what, you know, she, she's in our bandwagon, right? She's in our team, and everybody has just jumped on it. Look what happened to Kanye West, okay? That was a very good album. Christ is king, Jesus is king, right? There were people, if Justin Peterson said like, no, this guy is not a belief, okay? We need to wait and see. And everybody came, uh, you know, came after him. So this is the tendency that we do have Christians, okay? It's just because somebody is a conservative doesn't mean the person is a Christian. There's people who say that they are Christians, but they are not. There's a difference. A genuine believer and a cultural Christian, that's not the same thing. We shouldn't mix it because they are speaking our language. So we are going to, I'm going to show you guys that way you'll be able to see what I'm saying. You know, I have to bring the receipts, right? Backing it up, the issue I'm talking about, Candice, okay? So uh, what took place, okay? This is what happened prior to all this, okay? So just bear with me. Uh, that way I, I don't have to mess anything up and we'll get to, I know you guys have so much, you want to comment on this issue, so uh, hang tight. Okay, so what do we have? We have, uh, this is Ben Shapiro, okay? So listen to what Ben says over here. The audio is not so good, okay? So let me, uh, I can crank it up. Here we go. And the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this administration. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. 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 And I think she's been absolutely disgraceful. I think that, I think that her, her post sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not post sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying, and I find it distractible. Okay. So, uh, that clip that you just watched over there, okay, that was Ben Shapiro. Somebody recorded that on a TikTok. It wasn't all that. And Ben Shapiro was responding to this about Candace Owens, okay? All right. Uh, where's my Twitter? Right here. Okay, so this is... Uh, Ben Shapiro was responding to this tweet about Candace Owens. What had happened? This was last year in November when uh, the Kanye West uh, debacle came about, DEFCON, Crisis King, things of that nature. So this is what Candace tweeted, okay? And uh, we're going to read it. It's not a long tweet. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And this is what she, because that's the scripture, right? It's the same one on the mount. No one can save two masters. Either you hate the one and love the, uh, and love the other or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot save both God and money. Okay? And then Candice tweeted this, saying what? Christ is king. Okay? This was uh this was last year. Unfort and then Ben Shapiro. I, I already did a video about these things, okay? So you guys you can take advantage of those videos. Then Ben Shapiro tweeted responding to Candice. Candice, I'm paraphrasing, okay? If you're not uh you know, if you're if you're not interested with dirty wire, by all means quit. Why are you still taking money from Daily Wire if you are out here calling, you know, people cannot save two masters at once, right? And then she tweeted something that says what? Crisis King. So all this, Candice is responding to Ben Shapiro. Why? Because Candice had tweeted out saying uh, there's no country that can be, that should be doing genocide, things of that nature. Okay. Who is out here expecting a country to be doing genocide? Nobody. We understand that is. But Candice was saying that in relation to the war that's happening in Gaza. Okay? Israel is at war with Gaza. That's not genocide. There's a war that's happening over there. That's not genocide. Genocide has a meaning. But that's what Candice was referring to. Even though she ended up denying. Okay? So now, 
uh, fast forward, we are in 20, uh, 20, you know, this time around, right? Candace Owens uh, gets fired prior to having all these issues with the Jewish community. And mind you, during all that time, uh, she hosted this guy. I already did a video about him. Feinstein something. So controversial people, even within the Jewish community. So all these things, just like, okay, you are you taking a dig on Ben? Are you taking a dig on Ben? Are you trolling Ben? So eventually the roosters come home to roost. So this is what Candice tweeted, okay? And this is now recently. And she says, and I quote, the reason why some people believe that with enough insistency, they can convince American Christians that the basic truth Christ is king is actually anti-Semitic. It's because they have been successfully spiking the ball on Christianity for the past 60 years. Inch by inch, by pretending to be our friends and making us fearful of having the media project us as overzealous is how they have scored so many wins. It's how mocking Christ has become a commonplace in Hollywood. The reality is that they accuse us of what they are guilty of. They hold contempt of Christianity. The reality is that Christ's consciousness, take note of that. This is what Candice is tweeting, okay? Christ's consciousness, this is a new age language. They, a, a genuine believer is not going to be saying anything about Christ's consciousness, unless you're a new ager. The reality is that Christ's consciousness is rising throughout the world. And any person who's attempting to use methods of psychology to make people pause before they profess their faith, is not on the side of goodness, okay? And, you know, a whole bunch of people, uh, I mean, the whole nine yards, which is fine, you know, people can respond to that. There's no problem. Now, after Candice had tweeted, put that out, guess who uh, who came to, who responded? Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate and Ben Shapiro don't see eye to eye. Andrew Tate... She, he's in good terms with Candice. Candice went all the way there and interviewed him. This is what Andrew Tate put out. As a Muslim, it warms my heart to see the resurgence of spirited Christians' declarations, Christ is King. And I pray Christianity regains its strength and protects its societies against the pervasive and constant erosion of morality by the devotees of Satan. If you accept everything, you stand for nothing. Okay? So, that's Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate is a Muslim. Muslims do not believe that Christ is king. When Christians say that Christ is king, we, there is a meaning that is behind it. And Candice Owens ended up liking that tweet, okay? So happy, like, okay, this is what um, ben, uh, what's his name? Andrew, uh, Andrew Tate is saying, right? So just because people are saying that Christ is king, uh, yes, it's definitely, it's correct. That's not anti-Semitic for sure. I 100% grant that. But every time that Candice has found herself in conflict with Ben Shapiro or with the Daily Wire, she always tweet out stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? Oh, Christ is king and everything. She even went as far as saying that, uh, you know, they're being persecuted. She's being persecuted. Okay. She's being persecuted because she's a Christian. I don't think so. I don't think Candice is being persecuted because she's a Christian. She find herself in this situation, you know what I mean, that the Jewish community uh, portrayed the things that she was saying as anti-Semitic. They've been saying that for quite some time. As the main reason as to why Candice was fired from Daily Wire, that has not been disclosed. We've seen Ben Shapiro here. He didn't say anything as to why Candice was fired. And on the program yesterday, Jeremy Boring did not disclose as to why Candice was fired either. But since November up to now, ever since the Gaza war, Candice has found herself in conflict with the so-called Jewish community. And, you know, according to um, Jeremy Boring, just said like, no, you know, uh, you know they are pro-Israel. Uh, they don't support these anti-Semitic things of that nature. So if people are doing things that are in contradiction to the rules and regulations and policies of Daily Wire, they have no place at the Daily Wire. Because, you know, the other people, you know, to my knowledge, only Candace Owens has been on this issue of the Gaza issue, right? Now, you know, 
to say something about Jews, that doesn't mean everything is anti-Semitic, okay? There are things that are anti-Semitic, there are things that are not anti-Semitic. Unfortunately, because there's been people who have hijacked the term crisis king, and they are using it as a jab against the Jewish community, now the Jewish community are seeing that as anti-Semitic. You see what I'm saying? So these are the things that have transpired. But Candice has used that to say crisis king as a jab even though she has denied it. But if you look as to why she was using that and giving the backstory, just like, ah, uh, no. So for me, crisis king, absolutely, yes. But I'm not going to be like, okay, now I have to clap for Candice because she's saying that even though she's using it uh, in a way, that, you know, like you're jabbing at somebody for that issue. Like, no, I'm sorry. So that I do not. Now, okay, so before I go on to what the CEO of Daily Wire had also put out. Let's see what you guys are saying, okay? So now, let's get to the chats. Okay? There's, there's more, there's more, there's more. All right. There you go, Sheena Henning. All right, Candy, Ro Candice Rocks, I see you, I see you. Oh, oh what I say? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Brother Rob, yes, there's, there's something like that, Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, so I was a little bit behind, but, you know, that's Arabi Shmuri. <laughs> oh, have his, oh, wait, you cannot speak that expression. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so let's see. Um, okay, I had said that. Okay, he doesn't sound. Okay, she's using it. At, yes, Eddie Hicks. She is using it as a shade. That's exactly what she's doing. But Candy, she's, she's very good at manipulating. She's very good at portraying. She knows how to play the game. So as a result, some people are fooled by it. I'm not fooled by it, okay? You are not saying that Christ is king. Before, you know, why is it that you only say this phrase when you are in conflict with, uh, uh, with your co-workers? I'm sorry. That's, uh, that's not the way. You see what I'm saying? And not only that, according to Matthew 18, right? If you have an issue with your brother, you go to them, you're trying to win them over. So if somebody has an issue with you and, and they're coming, right? Or they're saying Christ is king, Christ is king. What is that? We're not denying that Christ is king, but wh why are you using it in that way? So it's a, they're misusing the term. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, our Ben Shapiro have been feuding for a while. Yes, they have been feuding for a while. So now I think, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know what? I think she, she just has to go. And that's what ha uh, that's what has been. She's an e an equal yoked if she is a believer. Uh no, Candice used to be a Protestant, and then she left that. Uh, now she's Catholic. She practices Catholicism, and now you know there's things about her that do not portray somebody with credible or faith. I do think that she's looking. She's searching. She definitely needs somebody to disciple her to show her. Okay, uh, you know. You, uh, meekness. Uh, you gotta be humble. You cannot be hard headed. These are the fruits of the spirit that she does not exercise. And every time she says, I want to defend myself, I want to defend myself. You know what I'm saying? Yes, there's a place for you to defend yourself, but some of these things, it's, it's too controversial. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, Catholic and husband. Yes. Even herself, too. She joined. Uh, she's now practicing Catholic. She's now practicing Catholic. They are so childish to me. <laughs> Oh, Jared is like, I'm not having this. This is too childish for me. <laughs> you guys can have it. Andrew Tate is uh, uh, open. Yes, Andrew Tate, he, he has his own issues over there. So the only reason why he came out, just like, okay, you know, somebody is, you know, it's just like, no. You know what I'm saying? If these Muslims are clapping for you, they are not clapping for you in a way. It's a job. That's what's happening. It's a job. That's what they're doing. Okay. So let's go into the tweet uh, that was put out by the CEO of Daily Wire, okay? So this is Jeremy Boring, okay? This is what he put out, okay? Uh, all right, then I'll, I'll make my comment. And this is what he put out, okay? How is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic? A question, so he's responding. The same way anything becomes anti-Semitic when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism. It's like asking, how does a shovel become a murder weapon? When it is used to murder someone, this isn't hard. A shovel is not innately a murder weapon. 
saying Christ is king is not innately anti-Semitic. It's all about how a thing is used. Saying eat some cornbread is not racist if I say it to my three-year-old when she is refusing her dinner. If I start saying it as a response to a Twitter post by black commentators I don't like, it has taken on a meaning beyond what is, what is innate. In other words, it is connotatively racist, not denotatively racist. So too, Christ is king may be anti-Semitic in connotation, why not in denotation, when it is being used to express anti-Semitism. When did this become so? It has always been so. It is so. Yes, innately. Additionally, saying Christ is king for an evil purpose, like using it as a weapon to express your hatred or disdain for the Jews, is a grave sin. It plainly violates the third commandment, thou shalt not carry forth the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Sure, if I, if I, uh, I cannot say that word, and murder someone like Hamas did on 10-7, and all the while I shout out them, Christ is key, or God is great, we would agree that I have committed three grievous crimes, not two. Uh, that one, yes, murder, yes, but also the great crime of implicating God in the first two crimes. So one must be cautious how one uses the name of God. God will not be marked. Invoking him in event self-promotion or to throw Jews or to attack your political rivals is to carry for his name in vain. Jesus Christ is king, sure enough. King of heaven and on earth. King of, uh, king of the Jews and Gentiles alike. Yet a bruised reed he will not break. And a fainted burn weak he will not smother. So don't use his name as a cudgel to bash those in whom the Lord of God is yet flickers if you do you are a blasphemer and anti-semite and a whatever generally and the fear of the lord is clear not in you it will be though so this was the ceo of daily wire responding to jason whitrock who had asked i'm asking this sincerely i'm a student of life i'm not that smart there are many things i do not know this is a sincere question without snack or sarcasm or trolling how is saying christ is king anti-semitic when did this become true Okay, so by now, I guess you guys, you see what's happening over here, right? They're using that. I do agree with J.M. Boring, what he said over here. Okay, he is also a hypocrite, J.M. Boring himself, because he nicknamed himself as, quote unquote, God King, something to that effect. So on that issue, like what he said over here, I grant to him it's correct, it's true. I do agree with him. But he should not be referring himself, blaspheming the name of God. So those, both of those things are definitely true. So, uh, I did see, I, 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 um, I saw Jima Joe. Jima Joe was, was, uh, was in the chat. I don't know, I should have put a star on it. Jima Joe, whoa, whoa, look at you. Happy to see you. Excellent manipulator, double-minded. Ben is always Ben. Candice has two sides used for her benefit against that. Yes, exactly. So now you, you these people, it's a mad match in heaven. So they are playing chess with each other. Everybody is manipulating everybody. But no, we see you, okay? We see you. You know, Ben needs to bow a knee and proclaim Christ as king. Candice needs to uh, bow the knee and proclaim Christ to be king. To be truly saved, not just a cultural Christian. So, you know, they are still alive and well today. They are not beyond redemption. They, uh, they can definitely come to Christ. So we pray for such people. But the thing is, as Christians, conservative, being a conservative does not mean the person is a Christian. Cultural Christian is different. So this has also plagued uh, the Christian community. Okay? I think Jeremy made it way bigger than it needs to be. So... Uh, well, you know, things have just gone out of hand at this point, to be honest with you, Eddie Hicks. But the explanation for me, the way he explained it, like, okay, you know, just because something is good, like, you know, the shovel example that he gave, you can use something uh, for bad, even though something is for good. So I did that, you know, in that regard, I'm just like, okay, yeah. So he also needs to, you know, to do some cleanup for sure. 
Okay, I have to admit, I'm more concerned about Antichrist than anti-Semitic. With, uh, withholding faith from Lord Jesus is extremely offensive in my eyes, and I think it is worth saying so. Oh, okay, with the Andrew Craven uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning, at the top of the hour. Yes, for sure. So, all in all, uh, in, these things are playing, and there's people who are getting affected by this issue. Okay, that's just a fact. These are the things that are happening. All right. So, uh, I did like uh, the article that Samir Say put out. Okay? So, at least I don't have to worry. This one is, is a brother. And we have to remember also, remember even with this issue about the Jews, right? There's different eschatology that Christians do have that disagree. So, depending how you have your eschatology, you will have a different placement where you put Israel and the Jewish people and, you know, things of that nature. So those things, they also do uh, get in the way. All right. So this is an article that Samuel Say had written. I'll share this with you guys. Okay, here we go. It's not long. All right. So... So some essay wrote this article, okay? Christ is king of the Jews. I'm not on the screen. Just put a B in the chat if you can hear me. <laughs> I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. All right, so Candice Owens and other conservatives have made Christ is king. Um, can I get a B in the chat if you can hear? Oh, thank you. Great. All right, fine. We continue. Thank you. Candace Owens and other conservatives have made Christ King a trending topic on social media. But like Pontius Pilate, who wrote an inscription saying, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, on Jesus' cross, they are not sincere. They are mocking Jesus and the Jews. However, for Christians, Christ is King is a theological and political statement about Jesus, divine identity and supreme authority, over all creation, especially on Palm Sunday, a celebration of the day Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem days before the crucifixion. So for sincere Christians, Christ is King is about our love for Jesus. But for some Christless conservatives, it's about their hatred for Jews. Christ is King is trending on social media because after the Daily Wire ended their relationship with Candice Owens, Andrew Craven suggested her use of the phrase is anti-Semitic. Though some religious Jews say otherwise, Christ is king isn't anti-Semitic. It's the truth. The truth isn't anti-Semitic. Since the Bible says Christ is king, people who say it's anti-Semitic to say Christ is king are accusing God of anti-Semitism. However, like Pontius Pilate, when some conservatives say Christ is king, they are attempting to give him a crown of thorns. Candace Owens joined Twitter in 2017, but the first time she tweeted Christ is king was in November 2023. Bingo, 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 bingo. In, guess what was happening in 2023? That was a tweet that I shared with you when she got into it with Ben Shapiro. Now, all of a sudden, she's saying that Christ is king. That's the problem, okay? And I continue, okay? Uh, uh, oh, now I've lost my, my, my place because I got excited. He said something. Okay, Christ is king was in November 2023 in response to Ben Shapiro's criticism of her anti-Semitic words after Hamas terrorist attack against Israel in October. She has since successfully made Christ is King a slogan for anti-Semitic people. Anti-Semitic social media personalities like Sneeko tweeted, Christ is King. Sneeko is a Muslim. He doesn't believe Christ is King. He's just mocking Jesus and the Jews. Andrew Teddy, also a Muslim, said, As a Muslim, it was my heart to see the resurgence of spirited Christian declarations, Christ is King. One comment on Candace Owens' recent tweet said, I'm not even a Christian, but them saying I can't say it makes, um, oh, look, okay, hold on. No, I'm, I'm not even a Christian, but them saying I can't say it makes me want to say, uh, Christ is king. 
Jesus' words to Jewish leaders in Matthew uh, 5, 8 describe these people. Jesus said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. Their social media posts are not sincere. They do not believe Christ is king. They honor Jesus with their tweets, but their hearts are far from him. That is why they are using his name and titles in vain. If we do not live as though Jesus is Lord, then we do not sincerely believe he's king. If we do not obey him as Lord, then we do not save him as king. It's evil to use Jesus' name and title in vain to mock anyone, but it's especially evil to use his name in vain to mock his ethnic people. In Romans 11, the Apostle Paul says, Gentile believers shouldn't be arrogant towards Jews because of their unbelief, especially since their unbelief is part of God's redemptive plan. Particularly in Romans 11, 18, he said, Do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, a, if you are remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Meaning, we shouldn't be anti-Semitic. If it wasn't for Jews, we Gentiles wouldn't be saved. The prophets are Jews. The apostles are Jews. And as the Apostle Paul says in Romans 7, 16, the deliverer will come from Zion. That deliverer is Jesus. Therefore, it's shameful for Gentile believers to be arrogant towards Jews. However, it's especially pathetic for Christless Gentiles to be arrogant towards them. After all, Christless conservatives are just as lost and condemned as Christless Jews. Amen, amen, amen. So when they say Christ is king to mock Jews, they are primarily mocking Jesus. However, they haven't considered the meaning of Christ is king. The word Christ is the Greek word for the Jewish word Messiah. So when we say the Messiah is king, what do we mean? What is he the king of? As Revelation 5.3 says, Jesus is the king of the nations. He's the king of America, the true king of England, the king of the every nation. However, whether they acknowledge him or not, he is uniquely the king of one ethnic group. Though he had the wrong motives, Pilate was right when he called Jesus the king of the Jews. The prophet Zechariah said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout out loud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a court. The fall of a donkey. Zechariah 9.9 Jesus is a Jew. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, Revelation 5, 5. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and Jews of Jews. He's the deliverer from Zion. Zion belongs to him. Zion belongs to the King of the Jews. In that sense, Jesus is a Zionist. When he returns, he will establish his throne in the new Jerusalem, in the new earth. Only, uh, only the people who sincerely believe Christ is King will be part of his King down. Hallelujah. Okay. So that was the article that Samuel say put out. And I do agree with the article that he put out. Unfortunately, Christians have found themselves jumping on the bandwagon of Candace Crisis King, Andrew Tate, and all these other uh, Muslims. Okay. They do not believe that Christ is king. Just saying it with their lips, it does not mean. They, they, do not, they honor him with their lips, but they don't, they don't believe those things. So this is similar to the saying, remember, when, uh, you know, it's this issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, black lives matter, right? When people are like, okay, black lives matter, okay? Like, why should I say that? Like, you know, it creates this issue, you know, within the community and everything else. So I'm afraid that this term, Christ is king, is also creating that thing. That shouldn't be. Okay? Uh, people died to say uh, Jesus is king in the early church, right? Because Caesar is king, right? Kaiser Curious. People died just to say uh, Jesus is king. So why should we be out here, lose the term Christ is king for people like Andrew Tate and the likes? Just because they want to dunk on Ben Shapiro and whatever, and the Jewish people. For what reason? For what purpose? All of them, Andrew Tate... Uh, ben Shapiro, all these guys, we want them to bow the, the, the knee and to truly profess G uh, Jesus is king. Jesus is king. So that's just how I am seeing it, okay? But uh, what say you guys, okay? But uh, before we, uh, okay, we, we can look at the chat because I was going to share something uh, real quick, okay? Let's do this, okay? I want to share this, then uh, we'll get to the charts, okay? Um I have this here. 
You guys, can you see it? Oh, all right. Well, I've lost my place. Let me see. Mm. Man, the devil is a liar. <laughs> all right, so let's read uh, Philippians 1, 15. Okay? Some indeed, preach, some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincere, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that, I rejoice. All right. So that was uh, Apostle Paul, right? Other people were doing it as a job. You know what I'm saying? But for him, it was just like, okay, I'm standing on the truth over here. Some do it for rivalry whatsoever. So these things do happen. It happened during that time. So other people were just doing it or whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody ends up hearing uh, uh, Christ is king and they bow the knee, they, that used for them to search what it means Christ is king, that's a good thing. But he, us as believers, us as Christians, we cannot be purposefully drawing a crooked, uh, a crooked line, searching for crooked sticks, just because God can draw a straight line with a crooked stick. Our means, our end must be godly. You see what I'm saying? So if a Muslim is out there, is saying Christ is king in a mockery way, God can still redeem that. God can still use that. But me as a believer, as a Christian, I don't need to be jabbing at Ben Shapiro, rah, 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 Christ is king. You see what I'm saying? In a way like, no. So there's a way to use that phrase as a lying cry, but there's a way to use that phrase also in a way that's ungodly. So other Christians have found themselves jumping on this issue to be saying these things. So it has proven that Candice Owen has been a dirty wire for years. And the, the, the time that she was to proclaim Christ is king is when she got into it with Ben Shapiro. While all the while, while she was at, at Daily Wire, she was professing to be a Christian. And now she's saying that she's being, uh, uh, saying like, oh, you know, Christians are being persecuted, this, that, and the third. So I personally do not buy it. So on that, we call Candice to, you know, do not use the name in vain, okay? Uh, you know, do it well. So, yes, whatever the issues that transpired at uh, Daily Wire, be that as it may, uh, you know, we don't have just to, you know, give in. You know what I'm saying? She, you know, she has a right to talk about things. She has a right to defend herself. She has a right to do those things. But we cannot just pretend to be hiding uh, behind... We cannot be hiding behind, quote-unquote, crisis king. I don't think it's fair. Okay? So, let's get to the charts. I know I've been rambling over here. I was looking, in fact, for another, uh, you know, for a certain tweet, but I cannot uh, find it. Um, uh, uh, you know? Yeah, so those are the things that happened. So, this is also one of the uh, a tweet that she had put out. Hold on, guys. Okay? These are some of the things, you know, she can say whatever she's on. My crime is that I do not believe that American taxpayers should have to pay for Israel wars or the wars of uh, other countries. I will not change my mind. So the question is, what will you do to me next? The world is watching. Okay? So it's just like, you know, that's fine. That's what you think. Uh, people can have different uh, teams, right? But, you know, there is a geopolitical things that do go on. Okay? And... It is what it is, right? But, yes, guys, let's take a look at the charts. What guys are you saying over here before we go to DD, PD there? All right. So, uh, Messiah. All right. Um, <laughs> Miss Shira was like, I don't care for either one of them. I see you, Shira. Okay. Um, okay, severe. Okay. It's wise choice for sale to save a tie. She's moving on towards compromise her interview Andrew Tate revealed as well. Yes, exactly. And the way she was kind of like carrying order for Andrew Tate, like, ah, come on, man. It's not a behavior of um, 
uh, you know, a godly woman out here, you know, just so you want to score an interview. Come on, you know, you still have to be God honoring even the things that you do. Excellent, my dear, double minded. Ben always been kind. Hey, <laughs> Jimacho is, is just handing to all of them, okay? <laughs> yes, Jimacho, keeping it real. I think it oh, needs that need to be, okay? Uh, Andrew can German Jews and many other. Oh, yes, by the way, Andrew Craven, he's actually Jewish. He's also Jewish. He's also Jewish. Oh, oh Eddie Hicks put a V instead of a, v, a B. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, Andre is in the house, yo. Thank you, Andre, for stopping by. Okay. <laughs> Sam, uh, Sam always comes through. Oh, yeah, man. Sam, I mean, he's a good writer. Some would say he's a good writer. I'm like, you know what? This is what I was seeing. I was thinking. But, you know, yeah, we just need people who can write and, you know, give it to us. Yeah, give it to us. So I guess we can take a look at, um, yes, you know, right, uh, got to keep it Christ for you. Yes, for sure. Yep, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, yeah, we're going to carry on and then see, you know. But, yeah, so, you know, I mean, like, you know, what do you guys think about this whole thing, okay? Like, I think things have definitely gone out of hand for sure. Okay, things have definitely gone out of hand for sure. And it has not helped matters waste because, like, to me, I'm like, okay, you know, Candice, she has done some good work, okay? She has done some good work. But now, even the... Uh, you know, quote unquote, the black community, they'll be like, no, we don't want you go back. Because every time you were speaking bad things about the black community, you know what I'm saying? So now she have rubbed issues, even this, uh, the conservatives in the Jewish community. So now she's latching on to, uh, to Christians. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, you know how Christians are, you know, if somebody says they're saved, if somebody says it, everybody just jump on it. I like, no, 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 Candace, <laughs> we are. We are watching. <laughs> we are watching. Ah, oh, dear old Christian with the super chat. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, no, we are watching, okay? So, uh, we are not going to be fooled. <laughs> Want to support by saying thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? Guys, be sure to say, I think everybody here is subscriber to dear old Christian. But in case if you are not, Make sure you subscribe to Dio Christian, okay? It's killing it, you know? Funny will be coming for you. Funny, funny, funny. <laughs> All right, so we need to uh, move on over here and see. Man, I was going to... Let me see how how slick I can be, okay? If I can make this happen because I think... Uh, uh, okay, because you imagine... Uh, what is it? Oh, okay. So, hey, this girl, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dora Company offering you is rather than allowing someone who works for you to get cancer. What is it? Imagine the CEO of my, don't know what I see. Anyway, I, I was looking over here, uh, Candice, uh, put out, you know, uh, Okay, anyway, because she had talked about she's getting, um, being persecuted. Okay, fine. I find it. I'm sorry, guys. Okay? We need to uh, put our receipts over here. Okay? After this, then we'll do PDD. Okay? All right. So, this is Candice right here. Okay? And she's saying, this, this is a cute attempt to rewrite history after you tried to cancel the phrase, but let's just recap what happened here for the record before you move on to trying to gaslight Christians. Okay? Absolutely no one shouted Christ is king at a Jew. Rather, what happened was, um, rather, what happened was that a group of nasty people tried to spearhead a PR campaign behind the scenes to smear me as anti-Semitic when it was announced that I parted ways with a daily wire. As proof of this, it was offered up that I treated Christ as king last November with ADL and Andrew Kevin. So all these things is just coming home to roast for her. But she went on to, to uh, you see where she is now? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Okay? This is, uh, this is the Sarah Jakes things over here. You know? I'm like, to me, you just can't be, if you have an issue, deal with the issue. Okay? And obviously, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. 
well, I'm not going to go to the idea just taking the scripture out, out in vain over here. Just because you're having a disagreement with somebody. Come on, guys. Do we even have to, to, to exige this text? Now everybody, somebody disagrees with you. No, no weapon formed that me shall, shall prosper. Christians don't use scriptures this way. Okay? So I did put out over here. Why do you say the phrase when you're in conflict? How come you never use the phrase in the absence of conflict? Just saying the phrase is pointless. Catch your Christianity's ways. Real believers don't use scriptures in, in vain. Contentiousness is not the fruit of the spirit. Okay? So I, for one, I am not buying it. If somebody is attacking you, deal with the situation. You just can't be, oh, no weapon formed at me, uh, against me shall, shall, shall prosper. Okay, remember, it's just like, okay. And somebody put out and said, the Skiv, uh, sons of Skiva, they were out there casting whatever demons, right, pretending, huh? and the demons came and says, like, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? <laughs> Even the devils ask the sons of Skiva, and they run out of there naked. Why? Because they were just throwing the name of Jesus, using it f uh, f uh, f for their own means. So, right now, just because these are the things that Candice is saying, right? As true as they may be, we want to go deeper than that issue. Okay? We want to go deeper than that issue, okay? But I think uh, I have prosecuted the case. All right. Now we're going to go to PDD, okay? But what are you guys saying, okay? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got another super chat, yo. Okay, super chat for Jimajo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. All right. So, yes, I hope that that is clear. So, pray for Candice for her to be able to know the truth. Okay? For her to genuinely be saved. Because it does not even help us. You know, we know we have family, we have friends. They say that they're Christians. We know that they're not Christians. They are very difficult to witness to, but we actually know like ah, that person is not a believer. We know that. So I think she's in that situation. I truly think that she's looking, she's searching. So I know she's friends with Ali Beth Stake and Ali Beth Stake, she's a genuine believer. She's a follower of Christ for sure. So we hope, you know, the influences that are around her will help her to be a truly born again Christian because she can be a very godly woman to be used as an instrument of God. All right, guys. Now, uh, we... Oh, no, no, no. Let me... I was going to go to PDD before the chats. I forgot. Forgive me. All right. What are you saying, Marcus? Making the response to the attack from Gaza to be suddenly about the Jewish religion, rejection of Christ, is not the right time. That's not sincere. Yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You know, we've talked about the Gaza war. You know what I mean? You can talk about those issues. But now you start to say, oh, that's genocide. That's not genocide. You know? Like categories and things in context but i do think for her if she says something that's favorable to ben she doesn't want to do it you see what i'm saying because it's like it looks like no if ben shapiro is correct granted it's correct because the truth is truth if he's wrong he's wrong that's about it ben shapiro was dead wrong about the covid jobs for sure he was wrong okay Two feminists see no improvement there. Candice and Abby. <laughs> oh, Tibet is not team ABS. <laughs> but, you know, Alice, you know, Alice is a true believer. Candice, uh, <laughs> Tibet. <laughs> Unfortunately, Candice may be sick in the cosmic Christ. Yeah, and she's saying, remember, she said Christ consciousness. Okay, that's a new age terminology language. Okay, we don't believe in Christ consciousness. What is that? Okay, what is Christ consciousness? That's, uh, you know, the, the new age stuff. So, yeah. But all right, so now let's take a look at the situation with uh, P. Diddy, okay? P. Diddy has found himself uh, in hot water, okay? And it looks like, you know, they, they are coming for him. They are coming for him. So this is uh, what took place. This was the breaking news. Uh that broke yesterday, and they raided both of his two houses at the same time by the DHS. So let's uh, watch what took place over here, and we'll just do a little bit of commentary, okay? Be, you know, shh. Man, your sin will find you sooner or later, you know? God is not mocked, but allegedly, okay? 
There are new questions this morning after federal agents raid two homes owned by Sean Diddy Combs. Agents armed and wearing tactical gear entered the Moguls estates in Los Angeles and Miami yesterday, and right now it's not clear why. Mm -hmm. But as Jared Hill explains, this all comes after months of sexual misconduct allegations against Combs. All right, they just made their way in. Growing concerns today after armed Homeland Security agents raided the L.A. and Miami homes of music mogul Sean Diddy Combs Monday. Sources tell CBS News the simultaneous searches are part of a possible sex trafficking investigation by federal agents in New York. The fact that you see federal law enforcement raiding two of Sean Combs' homes indicates that they think that there's evidence of potential wrongdoing at those residents. You can see people in handcuffs outside of Combs' California property, though no sign of Diddy himself. The execution of simultaneous search warrants indicates that they don't want anybody to hide potential evidence of wrongdoing. For the past few months, Diddy, one of the biggest names in entertainment, has been embroiled in numerous sexual assault allegations. Last November, his former girlfriend, R&B singer Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie, filed a federal lawsuit alleging a long history of violence and abuse in the nearly decade-long relationship. She reached a settlement with Combs while the entertainer denied any wrongdoing. Since then, Combs has been accused of sexual misconduct in five different civil suits, including last month from Diddy's former music producer, Rodney Jones, who claimed the mogul sexually harassed and drugged him sometime between 2022 and 2023. Jones also said Combs pressured him to hire prostitutes and perform sex acts. Combs' attorney called allegations pure fiction. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. All right, so that's what happened to this guy. And uh, somebody, uh, while all this is going on, TMZ, I don't know how they find these things, okay? Somebody saw P. Diddy walking around. It's, you know, it's not a good holiday, but I'll just share it with you guys, okay? I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. I know. him there walking uh, pacing around while the raid was going on according to to, uh, to TMZ yeah so they slowed it down so you can actually see that's definitely him yep that's definitely him yep and it looks uh, yeah so the word is like if they do that simultaneously like that and that was DHS they went in there, guns blazing the whole nine yards. It's a, uh, it's a lot, you know. It's a lot. So, who knows what's going to happen to him? And somebody, you know, they were interviewing some of um, eyewitnesses. They say that you know they were seeing people going in and out. You know what I'm saying? Who people who lived in the community over there, cars dropping some girls, things of that nature. But who knows? You know, but hey, there's nothing that is that will stay hidden, right? God is not mocked. So let's see what this guy had to say. It's this is so very disturbing, very very disturbing. It appears that it seems as though federal law enforcement officers have been paying attention to those lawsuits and want to do some poking around to see if there's any uh, evidence that these uh, accusations are actually give rise to federal crimes. And of course, when you look at civil lawsuits, you think it's civil, but federal investigators or law enforcement simply can't ignore, you know, these major allegations of sex rings and drug trafficking. So they had to take some action. Absolutely. And uh, we're seeing this trend where civil lawsuits are giving rise to uh, criminal investigations. We've seen that with Jeffrey Epstein. We've seen that with Harvey Weinstein. We've seen that with R. Kelly. Where where there's smoke, sometimes law enforcement officers believe there's fire. And uh, based upon some of the empirical evidence, sometimes that happens to be true. So it appears that, you know, this is a very well-known person. Uh, he's well-known in, in Hollywood. So this is going to be a big case for federal law enforcement officers. Now, we got here where it began with Cassie Ventura, the ex-girlfriend, right? Yes. What happened in that case when she filed a civil lawsuit, not criminal? So she filed a civil lawsuit uh, detailing uh, that she was uh, sometimes forced to have sex with uh, sex workers uh, while being drugged. And as soon as that lawsuit came out, they quickly settled. That's not an admission of guilt, um, but certainly uh, there was reason to settle. After that happened, there was a string of other lawsuits that came out. At least three other uh, women also made similar accusations of having sex with sex workers, being drugged, 
And that led to the most bombshell case, which was actually by a former producer on Diddy's album, The Love Album. Uh, his name was Rodney Jones. And he not only made those accusations, but he also uh, had his form of receipts. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't necessarily know if those receipts are uh, accurate. Uh, they haven't been um, they haven't been proven in court, right. but he, he provided pictures in his in his lawsuit detailing that P. Diddy and his children, his sons, uh, were having uh, sex parties with underage sex workers, that oftentimes people were drugged, that he himself was drugged and woke up in the bed of sex workers and Diddy, um, detailing that P. Diddy usually would record these um, incidents, which is another reason why law enforcement officers may be interested in uh, looking into these homes. Um, sexual assault cases can be very difficult to prove. Mm -hmm. Human trafficking cases can be difficult to prove. And and the way law enforcement officers typically try to prove those cases is by looking into cell phone data, video footage. Uh, in the uh, lawsuit, which was a 75-page lawsuit, uh, Mr. Jones detailed that P. Diddy often would record these uh, acts on his own cell phone as well as hidden cameras uh, throughout the house. So do we think uh, an arrest is anytime close or soon, or are they just gathering evidence at this point? Well... So that's the situation with P. Diddy, uh, and they raided both of those homes at the same time, confiscated some cameras, things of that nature, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good. And, hey, man, you know, you live that type of lifestyle, sooner or later the rooster's going to come home to roost. And the idea of th his own son is also implicated in these things, allegedly, that his son was also participating like he... <sighs> That's so gross. That's so gross, but innocent until proven guilty, as they say. As they say. Okay, what are you saying, Suzy Q? Yeah, that has, she, uh, she has been beat up and forced into those situations. She never refused. I don't, I think like she was 19 at the time. And, you know, there were pictures of her. They're going to all these places, all dressed up and everything else. But yeah, that lawsuit was set up real quick. Uh, before that statute expired in New York. And it was a lot of money. And his lawyers have spoken. He says people are just looking for payday. And they deny all these allegations. So, and he does not understand why the, you know, the authorities went into those places, guns blazing like that. And the lawyer is not pleased about that. So, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. As what's in it? Cad Williams said, right? This is the year of... Uh, People are going to get exposed the year of truth. So, hey, man, you know, who knows? Either you come out now or they, you will be discovered. Or you will be discovered. Yep. All right, guys. I mean, we had a, we had, you know. Oh, and then they, there's a bridge that collapsed, you know. The Baltimore Bridge collapsed. And it was 1 a.m. Praise God, it was 1 a.m. That was less traffic. They obviously there's you know people have lost their lives, which is very sad. So keep those families in prayers. But it was just like man, it's yeah. So that was a very sad thing that took place. It was very sad. I was just like, what? You see these things in the movies, but it happened like in real life. Yeah. So the ship, it was an accident. So far they're doing an investigation. So the preliminary findings, it was an accident. But there'll be more details to come. So yeah, that's what happened out here all right guys Susie q i appreciate you good to see you i'm so glad that you were with us this evening nicholas nicholas the proclaimer of messiah that was nice what are you saying about the private investigation Invest can be done for civil suit and it doesn't require a cause oh okay but yeah that was a lot of law enforcement and it was happening simultaneously in california as well as in um Miami, okay? The whole thing with Dede is just wild. He's wondering why he stopped being prosecuted since he was doing this open for years. Oh, yeah, hey, you know what they say, right? Like, okay, if they cannot use you anymore, <laughs> where is Zara Kerry now? Okay, so <laughs> it looks like Dede might be next. <laughs> Dede might be next. Yeah, man. But yeah, guys, we did it. We did it. We did it, guys. We did it. We did it, guys. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You know, don't forget to like this video, yo, okay? Leave some comments, leave some comments, leave some comments. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I mean, like, Candice, she's just, uh, she's a, I mean, like, she, you know, um, she's a big star. So you're getting both, you know, you get Team Candice, you get Team Against Candice, so you can get incoming. <laughs> 
You can get it incoming, but you know, I'm in good hands. I have Miss Betty. <laughs> I agree, so you must be offended powers. Yes, that's what they do, yeah? <laughs> yes, they're coming to correct. They're coming to correct. They're coming to correct for sure, yeah? Oh, but it was so nice to seeing you, Jimajo. It was lovely seeing you. And thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the super chat. All right, guys, you know, if you guys see some, you know, good stories, whatever you'd like to comment, you know, please just send them my way. I appreciate that. Yeah, so today, that's what we have today, okay? We have to save um, our prophetess, you know, for another live. <laughs> prophetess, Kate Curl for another live, for another live. All right, guys, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'll let you guys go. And, you know, be sure to like this video on your way out. So, okay, let's give you guys a shout out. You know, <laughs> shout out to Susie Q. I always forget to use What's this wrong one. wrong with you people? But there's nothing wrong with you guys, okay? <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Did my Joe join us tonight? It was nice seeing you. Sister Betty, good to see you. Susie Q, nice. Nicholas. All right, guys. I guess we'll call it a night. I appreciate you guys for being here. All right, guys. That is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.